Hello my love, welcome back to the Hottie Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jess and I'm so excited, so honored to be able to pull charts for you and do the full astrological breakdown of what we can expect for this week ahead. Now, as you guys can see, I'm currently in my living room. I've just been feeling really cozy lately and I'm drinking my, my drug of choice today for probably worst way to say that, but I'm drinking water today, pathwater.com. They're not the sponsor of this video at all, though I wish that they were. Absolutely phenomenal brand. If you've never heard of them, drinkpath.com is their website. Their morals are very much in alignment with my own morals and also my, my morals for my business, my company. Bahati life and also my religious practice my spiritual practice so i'm going to be sipping on them instead of my usual green tea or coffee or tea technically i should say and coffee so there is so much for us to talk about today mercury retrograde number one and then also the total solar eclipse happening sign of aries is going to be a huge life changer for every single one of us now of course we're going to talk about those transits but you guys know I'm really big on magic and intention. So I'm going to sprinkle some beads of magic into our conversation to inspire you into certain actions and certain intentions that will infuse magic, intention, and gratitude into your day-to-day -day life. Because again, you guys know I'm really big on that. So let's take a little break, a little pause, grab whatever drink you're gonna be sipping on, and then let's dive right in. As you guys know, if I'm going to break down the entirety of the week, I find it very, very important for us to take a step back and look at exactly where it is that we have already come from. One of the major transits that has happened was the fact that we had the full moon happening in the sign of Libra that happened on April 6th. Then we had Venus that rules our magnetism, what we're attracted to, beauty and aesthetic, entered into the sign of Gemini that was on April 11th. Also the same day, April 11th, the sun conjoined with Jupiter, the planet of abundance and expansion and wisdom. So we had to deal with that. And then shortly after April 14th, Venus, again, newly entered into the sign of Gemini, is was squaring off with Saturn, who has been ruling, or always has ruled, restrictions, regulations, organizations, and the foundation for things that have, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, a permanent, lasting, healthy position within our lives, okay? So what this really showed for many of us in order for you to check in real quick before we can, again, move forward is that there was so much energy that we are walking in and walking out of but still kind of holding on to those traits around the idea of independence and focusing on what gives us most significant value within our lives. The way to do that usually sometimes is to step away so that we can reassess all of the things that we have found ourselves wanting to harmonize with and to align with. And if those things are not like-minded, if it's not mutual, if it's not reciprocated, then they will naturally, of course, begin to fall, fall away or change. And sometimes that change can be painful. It can be exciting. It could bring a lot of different emotions and feelings, but either way, for the most part, it's that taking a step back that allows you to put a lot of things into perspective. Now, I know that change, the idea of that can be very triggering for many of us because these charts have been so wired for change and we feel like there's major change every day. I mean, just look at the news. There's something groundbreaking or breaking news that's entering into the chat that we're just like, yo, another thing, we're not even surprised anymore. But that's happening on a global level in your more intimate lives. Chances are you are reassessing a lot of your values here and this step back helps you to not only to envision your future, but to get a bigger picture of it, of what you can see, and then begin to make really aggressive, forward, clear moves as far as what your direction is going to look like from now into the near future. 
So like I said, it can be very difficult. There could be some challenges. There could be some tension. There could be some microaggression or some shifting that happens, some need to kind of pivot. But all of that has helped you to be where you're at right now, which is, you know what? This is exactly how I know myself to be. This is who I am. Remember that was a statement that we kept talking about with this Aries season energy, I am. This is who I am now. This is what I want. This is what I wanna pursue. And with all of that in mind, I'm gonna allow myself to be intuitively led by my higher self or the divine, my angels and my guides. I'm gonna keep them all real close to me. And as we move forward into the near future, now, having said that, that is a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Let me take a, a sip real quick, and I'm literally at the very end of my water. That is a lot. Having said all that, enter in Mercury retrograde. Enter in Mercury retrograde was going to be happening April 21st, roughly around 4 o'clock in the morning, but we're going to feel it for the next three and a half weeks. So we are now... At the time of you watching this right now, chances are if you're following along with me in real time, we are now in the shadow phase and Mercury retrograde is going to go full blown reckless mode <laughs> it, um, April 21st and Mercury is going to start taking steps back through the sign of Taurus. The very things that we have built, that we have set our roots on or that we have decided that we value, we now have to revisit it, reprioritize it, and kind of shift. Now I know a lot of you guys are like, no, like you're just like, no, Jess, I don't have time. I don't want to do this. I know I hear you. But ultimately it's actually really nice because this is, if you're going to use this energy wisely and correctly, this is a perfect time for you to go back and maybe check some of your finances, your investments, because Taurus does rule those things. Are there things that is that you want to sell? Are there uh, businesses, um, biz um, eBay related businesses or working with websites and those types of things or website designs? What type of changes do you want to make to your own website? For me personally, you better believe I have my business, my brand on, on the internet. I'm going to go on and make some aesthetic changes and some, some aesthetic aesthetic shifts in order to make my website more, um, not relatable, but more navigatable. That's the right word. So when you see it, you're like, oh, okay, it's not so overwhelming because there are a lot of options, especially when it comes to magic. And that can be really intimidating for some people. So that's the way that I'm going to use this Mercury retrograde phase and stage. Mercury retrograde will show you, you need to auto correct this. You need to work on this. This needs to be changed. This needs to be shifted. Also, it has a wonderful tendency of bringing people into your life that can be proven to be very lucrative for you. So this is a great time to collab, to build, to connect with certain individuals that can help you with Taurus, whatever Taurus A rules within your chart, but also the things that Taurus naturally rules within your chart, which is estate sales, real estate, working on the earth, aesthetic, beauty, those types of things. Taurus loves those energies, and that is a wonderful way for you to incorporate this energy as Mercury, again, is retrograde in that sign during this time for the next three and a half weeks. So it's not something that needs to trigger anxiety or panic. Of course, you might have things of certain value that might go that might break or go missing, especially since Taurus rules the, the small little stuff that we can put our hands on. For example, our phone. Actually, just as I looked at a minute ago, I just got a text message involving very Taurus energy, Mercury retrograde type stuff. So I'm gonna have to go through this with a fine tooth comb and look at contracts and those types of things. And then that will give, I won't rush through it because it's Mercury retrograde after all. I'm gonna take my time. Now the reason why I say that is because this is how to work with these energies. Of course, I could lose my phone in the process, but if you're wise, you can just put little finder, like key finder things. I have a few actually that I love. I'll link it down below in my description box because I have an Amazon shop of like all my favorite things. I have a key finder thing that I put well, it's not a key finder, but it's essentially that's, you could use it for keys, you can use it for anything. I put it in my wallet, I put it in my purse, I put it on Franklin because he has a tendency to wander off. <laughs> like, he's loyal, but to an extent, if he sees a smiling face, he runs that face, and a lot of people find him cute and adorable, so I put a little tracker on him just in case. I also put it on something else I can't remember. Oh, the remote. 
Those things that I have a tendency to get lost during this time are things that I will make sure those batteries are charged, make sure that my phone is backed up. If my laptop has a potential to give me a hard time during Mercury retrograde, I give myself an extra hour in the day of free planning just to fill in any gaps or holes if anything were to happen. Now, Mercury does rule communication. It does rule communication. So this means that there is a very high chance that people of the past, exes, connections, etc., etc., will decide to resurface into your life and say, hey girl, how you doing? How's your mom? How's the family? Haven't seen you. You look like you're doing well. You'll start to fill in out in all the right places. How you been? And this is one of those times where you really take the advice and the wisdom of last week and the week before that when you were spending so much time focusing on your yourself and your own priorities and just getting everything into alignment and into order and ask the question, is this person, is this conversation worth it for me? Or is it something that is going to invite disorder and chaos into my life, which looking at the chart, there's the potential for that. Make sure that you are at least minimally prepared and you know what it is that you're working with so you're not caught up in the wave or the current of these energies because yes, they have the potential to provide good and opportunity, but also with all things, it can also create a little bit of a challenge if you are vulnerable or susceptible to repeating past circumstances and also no judgment here because we will get through it if something does happen after Mercury decides to go direct once again. So one of the last thing that is that I wanna to talk to you guys about, a few things, the sun is gonna be entering into the sign of Taurus, April 20th, Earth Day type of energy, and then we also have the sun squaring off with Pluto, April 20th, same day. Mercury then is going to trine off with Mars, 11th, that is the 21st. Sorry guys, my allergies have been kind of like bothering me a little bit, so I'm getting a little teary-eyed. I'm not crying, I'm not crying. So these transits, basically what they do is they can bring in some power struggles, basically where you feel like you might be fighting with energies that just feel like they're trying to control you, things that you're, you really essentially are not vibing with. I also think it's really important too that we talk about the fact that Pluto will be going retrograde again. I just looked at it and I was like, oh shoot, we need to talk about this May 1st. So again, there's some major shifts that's gonna be happening as far as your ability to understand what makes you um, powerful, your shadow self, any issues of, temp not temptation, but areas where you get you feel manipulated. Also, parts of your deep dark self, your dark, your darker sides, we all have them, the shadow self that reveal themselves. These are issues that will come back up. Also, watch for politics, major change in politics. The issues of reform that we have, we thought that we have dealt with and we've laid them to rest, we've put them in the past, these are things that are now gonna come to the forefront. Also, people who have abused power or taken advantage of others or tried to manipulate taxes and those types of things. I think a perfect example of that would be someone like Donald Trump. We would see some major revelations when it comes to his trial and some of his more darker secrets being revealed and brought to the surface. Again, this is gonna be around Pluto retrograde, which is gonna be May 1st is when that energy is gonna start. So put a pin into that and then watch the news and watch how astrology, my astrology predictions align with what's happening in current events because I'm pretty spot on. I, I think there's rare times where I'm not, I don't know if there I have been not spot on yet. Hmm. Okay, uh, so yeah guys, so this, those are the things that is that I want you to be prepared for or planned for this week. I have my notes down at my feet, so if you're seeing me looking down, that's why. And then I have the chart here right in front of me just to confirm and to go with the flow. Oh, if anybody is looking for any symbolism, a red a woodpecker just jumped up. So if anybody wants to look into that, I believe the woodpecker represents um, persistence. Pretty sure persistence. So if that's a message for anything or anyone, then I would definitely receive receive it in full. Okay, how would I, if I were you, work my magic? A thousand and a hundred and ten, twenty percent. I don't care what your finances and your bank account is looking like. I would work this week setting intention for money, abundance, business, 
um, and business protection, money growth, bank accounts, those types of things. Because, and I just, as I said that, I heard be thorough. So making sure that you have a thorough team who's helping you or you are thorough in your finances and you're not letting certain things slip through the cracks. Spirit wants for someone specifically to know to be thorough in your budgeting and your plans and those types of things. Also, there's a lot of ebbs and flows and ups and downs with, especially with Mercury retrograde, now that I'm saying that in the sign of Taurus, look out for banks. I'm not telling you guys to pull your money out because I keep getting these comments and emails and DMs and also conversations keep showing up in my day-to-day -day life when I'm not talking about astrology of people being like, even my partner was like, Jess, uh, should I pull my money out of my the, the bank? And I was like, no, no, no. Like, and that's my partner. And I would not lead him astray. Like, I would not. I wouldn't lead anybody astray, but definitely not my partner. So I understand that there's this. We are watching things uh, unveiling themselves in in the day to day world. By all means, follow your own intuition. But from what I see and what I'm looking at, I would not pull my money out of the bank's systems yet. Um, however. There is something about being very thorough about your finances, your, your spending, your savings, and we will, high, high chance, I want to say 92% chance we're going to see, oh my god, that scared the fuck out of me, I don't know why though, pardon my French, sorry, I don't know why that just dropped like that, <laughs> um, but we will see some energy kind of shifting with the bank system. How did that even fall? That's like a fort just sitting there, anyways, um, where they might have like a meltdown the, the banking system i wouldn't be surprised if there was a meltdown that we start to see at the time of Mer mercury retrograde and again that's going to be april 21st but within starting april 21st the days around that and then leading into i would say four four weeks after that so keep your eyes out what if you see something say something leave it down in the comments i am going to zip off because i'm going to get ready for astro chat live that's where i go live 7 p.m eastern standard time every monday and i just chit chat with you guys we talk about astrology we talk about energy we talk about spirituality sometimes i pull messages and channel depending on if my energy provides it or if spirit has a message or if we just need to just t talk and vibe so i will see probably most of you guys there until then, man, if you are not a subscriber, I do not want to force you to subscribe, but I do want to invite you to subscribe. And if you choose not to, then it was honestly a pleasure. Any way for, for you to decide to click on this video and hang out with me, it's always something that brings me gratitude and warms my heart. So I just thank you. Thank you for being here. And for those of you guys that are old friends and family, my heart is so full for you and I'm so grateful. Thank you guys, I have been reading your comments. I know that you guys know that there's some personal changes happening on my end here and I know that you sense them and I, I feel that you're sensing them and I really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much for all of the love always. And it's been so warm, it's been so welcoming and it makes me just so excited for the present and for the future and everything that's ahead of us. And of course, I'll just always be your friend. You're showing up on the internet talking about astrology, tarot, and all the in-between. And I just hope that, you know, we just have more years together just doing this because it, it really does bring me so much joy. But, okay guys, thank you again so much for hanging out and then I'll see you guys in my next video or on Bahati Life Podcast or at BahatiLife.com. I'll talk to you later, bye.